Hey people, welcome to another edition of Clash Royale. That's Clash Royale. Now today, I want to talk to you about getting a bit of help when you're down in the dumps, when you hit a bit of a slump. And who's the person I've gone to for help? It's that golem. It's that big brute of a character, the golem. And I'll explain what, uh, what's happened over these last couple of weeks. Basically, if you just have a look at my profile, uh, you'll see that my, my highest number of trophies is in 1991, and at present I'm on 1911. So you think, okay, he's lost a couple of matches, but he's doing okay. Well, actually, what had happened was I'd slipped all the way back down to 1600. I hit a real slump and was really struggling. And a lot of people uh, are building decks that are very quick to have regenerating characters, um, and then maybe enhanced with a legendary character. Now, I don't have any legendary characters. Uh, but what I do have, what I do have is that golem. And so what I did uh, a couple of days ago was I built a deck around the golem, but something that could survive even if you don't get a chance to play your golem, because that's half the problem. You just try building a deck around a, a big character that you want to come in and do the damage. If you don't get a chance to play that character, then the rest of your deck is pretty vulnerable. So the best way to show you what I mean by that is to actually show you the deck in action. Let's have a very quick look and see the lineup. Uh, what you need to do, what you have to have for this, is patience. You're not going to win these matches by knocking all three towers down. You're going to win these matches probably by taking one tower down and then defending pretty sturdily. And as you can see, I've got the golem, and what the best characters to back up your golem are your bomber or your wizard, because that's the heavy artillery that follows the golem. So when they send in, um, whether it's an air attack, a ground assault, or a tower or something, these guys are following up and they're helping take out whatever it is that's attacking your big, meaty, bouncy golem. Now what I'll do, uh, the best way to show you this is to show you the last couple of games. Uh, I'm just going to very quickly actually go through the battle log because um, I think I'm right in saying it's played uh, this deck. I encompassed 13, 16 matches ago and in those 16 matches since of 113 drawn one and lost two, which I think you will agree is a pretty healthy uh, return. So I'm just going to scroll down. So all right, there's the defeat with the old deck. And as you can see, my deck is on the left. So there's the Golem's first match. So we go one for one, two for two, three for three, defeat. So three wins out of four, four wins out of five, five wins out of six, six wins out of seven, seven wins out of eight. This is just to prove to you it's working. Eight wins out of nine, uh, eight wins out of 10, uh, nine wins out of 11, 9 wins out of 12, 10 wins out of 13, 11 wins out of 14, 12 wins out of 15, 13 wins out of 16. Well, I got there eventually. Uh, a bit laborious, but just to prove to you that it does work. Now, I was going to pick a couple of matches at random. Let's just pick the last couple of matches uh, played and run through them. Uh, so what have we got here? We'll just speed up a little bit. Uh, now, straight away, what you want to do is just drop your spear gobs or your hog rider down. Just something to cause a bit of mischief. Now he started off uh, with some uh, the big boys, the Skell and the Giant, but he let his Skell get distracted, so I was able to take his Giant out fairly quickly, and because I can drop in uh, the, the little goblins and the spear gobs, very good defensively against the Giant, uh, took out his Skell quite comfortably, and straight away, look at that tower, he's down at the 700s, and I'm still on uh, two grand on mine, so immediately got the advantage. Now do not drop your Golem down when it's just hit the eight Elixir credits that you need, Try and use him when you've also got, uh, it's up to 10 and you've got a quick chance to drop in something else with him. I didn't do that there, as you can see, I uh, very quickly dropped the poison down. And if I just waited a bit, I could have taken that um, that tower that you dropped in uh, with it. But again, I'm still able to defend quite comfortably because I've got some fast spawning defense. Now, quite comfortably again, using the uh, hog backed up by the uh, wizard. I was doing okay, he suddenly pulled the balloon out of nowhere, but again, I'm able to call my spear, spear gobs out. I've got my bomber, and uh, the wizard is back up. They're just splashing the damage. Now, it's very easy here to think you can go for broke and get all three towers. Don't. You've got to defend. Because what you can quite often find is, you try to go for broke, and you're leaving yourself unguarded, and all of a sudden, it's one all, and you're going into overtime. So just pay attention to what's going on in your defence. Because you can easily uh, leave yourselves vulnerable because you get carried away for that success you've had. So as you can see, the one 0 win there. Let's just go into the final match. I played these yesterday, so I'm not quite sure, uh, having played so many matches, not quite sure uh, exactly um, what games we're seeing here. 
Now this guy is dropping elixir in straight away. It's a very dangerous thing to do because you're immediately uh, then only allowing yourself one defence um, against whatever I'm prepared to throw at him because he's too busy trying to build his elixir. Again, you should wait for a little while before you drop those in. Just let the game start to progress. So uh, I'm able, again, to start chiselling and I've got um, uh, the poison that I'll be able to drop in as well. So again, he's down to 700s on that tower. Now I've got the poison just generating now. There you go. That's going to take out um, his latest elixir. So whatever it is he's planning, that's going to ruin his plans because he's thinking, oh, I'm going to bring in two or three hefty characters. Well, he can't do that. This is uh, one of the attacks he was planning with the giant and the witch behind and the uh, baby drag. But with spear gobs and um, a wizard on either side, pulling them apart, it, it easily brought them down. Again, poison. Now, I don't know why he's laughing there. I don't know if he thinks that uh, I've woken up his main king and that's going to give him an advantage, because it isn't. Because now's the time to bring the golem into play. Now, this is full-on assault time. He's going to be... Uh, his main characters at the back there are all distracted by the golem. I can easily take the giant out. And now it's a case of sweeping up behind and just trying to force through those defences. And as you can see, with time running out, I've still got enough characters that I can drop down quickly. He's now having to drop down single uh, giant, single witch... Things that um, aren't being backed up by anything, and I can easily drop my poison down. Don't even have to be in his half of the pitch, or his half of the field, or field of battle, to take down that tower, because the poison does the job. So, there we go. What I need to do now then, I guess, uh, being a couple of trophies away from the crown chest, is just to put that in action in a live situation. And this is where I tend to uh, go to pieces, because I know I'm doing the uh, recording. And uh, I tend to not then be concentrating on what I'm doing because I'm trying to chat to you guys. So again, it's like I mentioned before, we'll just drop those in. He's dropping in his... Oh, he's already used his lightning. That was a bit premature of him. So very easily take out his hog rider. To consider playing the poison. Depends what he drops down. He's going to drop anything down. Right, OK. Well, we won't waste it on that. We'll just put our uh, bomber in play. Uh, that blooming ice wizard. I hate that ice wizard, but we've got ways and means of taking him out. And there they go. And I'm just going to keep a little continuous uh, barrage going on here. Just see what he's got. See what else he's got up his uh, sleeve. Right. Rather frustratingly there, I got halfway through that battle. The blooming signal went from my iPad to the MacBook, so it stopped recording. So what I'm going to do, as you can see, I have one... Uh, I'm going to take you back, uh, again in the battle log I'm afraid, just to show you what happened. But I can't leave you on Tenderhooks just wondering what's happened. And it did put me off a bit, because I wasn't too sure whether I should carry on playing. Because obviously in my mind I'm thinking, okay, I've lost that recording. But if I don't show you that battle, you'll think that I've tried to hide what went on. So as you can see, there's the match that we last looked at. Uh, and this is the match that I've uh, just played. And uh, let's get it on watch mode, and you can see where we were. Right, now where we were at the start was wishing him good luck, having a nice little pleasant chat. Uh, now I'm not quite sure where you broke down, so I'm just going to, I'm afraid, bear with me, I'm going to show you the whole thing again. Uh, but it probably come quite clear where I lost the plot a bit, because I was, <laughs> I got distracted thinking, what should I do next? Uh, again, spear gobs, wizard, uh, just come in and do a little bit of a job for you to start off with. Now at this stage, I was quite comfortable, and I'm thinking... Maybe I can bring the golem in fairly shortly. It would be quite nice to have had the uh, bomber to go with him. But I needed to pull the bomber out because all of a sudden, that flipping frost wizard. I hate that fro frost wizard. I hate that frost wizard pieces. So I had to counter that. He's trying to take out my characters there. So I thought I'd just carry on the assault for a bit. Now I think I actually said that in commentary. It's probably around here where I lost the game a bit. So I was doing quite comfortably here. As you can see, I still took the tower down. It chucked in the scales, it's not a problem. Uh, but this is where I started to uh, get distracted, thinking, oh, what, what should I do? What should I do next? Should I stop? Should I carry on playing? Obviously, didn't want to um, lose the match uh, by default. So I carried on playing here for a bit, but uh, by my own admission, I left my defences down a bit. Here, I'm considering what to do. Uh, he's chucked in his um, aerial assault, uh, backed up with a hog rider. Again, I've got my whiz to try and saw that out. So I wasn't too uh, worried at this stage. Uh, but again, now, if you have a look, I'm, I'm down, I'm comfortably ahead. But what I should be thinking about now, 
really is just defending. I've got the advantage. I think what again also didn't help was there's an awful lot of time left. And if he's got um, a rocket hidden up his sleeve or something that can start knocking six or seven hundred out of your tower, that's not going to be enough, is it, uh, to get you through to the win? So I'm thinking at this stage, uh, should I be defending? What should I be doing? Um, and I was a bit caught between two different things. Should I be going for a, an attack on his main tower? Should I be going for his other tower? I did the right thing here. I was just a bit patient to see what he did next. But then dropped my golem down and look at that. He's got a hog rider and his frost wizard and uh, the musketeer. Now that was a bit silly on my part because uh, my poor old wizard on his own can't cope with all of that. And now I've got my uh, golem going in unprotected. So this became a bit of an all-out scrap. Uh, I'll, ad I'll admit it now. It was just like, right, what have I got on my sleeve? I'll, I'll let his wizard do what it's doing down there because he'll go eventually. I've just got to try and chisel that tower down as much as I can. But at this point now, it's just about getting his tower down and saving my tower here. Forget the main tower um, because uh, half the damage you've done is on that uh, first tower. I'm just really trying to keep that going and defend against these frost wizards that keep appearing. Now you can see I've got Hog Rider here. I'm thinking that's about time to launch it. I'll get the poison I can drop. That'll take care of some of the skeletons. That'll probably wipe me out, but I've still got some more assaults that I can bring in. Just take the uh, wizard to get rid of the uh, aerial assault. There's his frost wizard occupied. Now let's try and get back on that tower. Get it down to a point perhaps where I can drop another poison on it. And this is now cool. I've got two characters uh, ahead up the path. That's waiting for him to drop in his um, uh, girl to try and take him out there. And I can throw in my hog. And then the poison. And then the tower goes. So it wasn't as clean as I was hoping. It wasn't the demonstration I was hoping for. It wasn't the demonstration of patience that I've been preaching. But it got me the two towers. Which took me to my crown chest. Which we wanted to see it open. And also, as you can see, I've got a golden chest out of it. Which is quite nice. In fact, let's uh, tick that underway. So let's have a look then in our crown chest. I hope that's of some help to you. Um, I didn't quite demonstrate in that final match uh, exactly how you should be doing things, but then these live situations, you've got to be prepared for all types of things. What it did show is the versatility of the deck. Uh, if your golem is going to take too long to pull out, there's plenty of other characters in there that can win you the match. Uh, so hopefully that did demonstrate that for you. I'll just quick, uh, quickly click through here. So we've got anything exciting. Spear gob's always useful. Giant for another type deck. And I quite like the lightning card, I have to say. Um, I do use lightning now and again. But for now, the deck that's carrying me through is this. These boys with a bit of poison to back them up. Don't forget, you can always drop the poison down. Uh, the poison can help you with against balloons, uh, against baby dragons. Basically anything in the air as much as it can on the ground. Uh, and it also, it does, like the uh, giant skeleton, it does slow them down. So if they're walking through treacle... So that's quite versatile. So when people are thinking, well, should I use the fireball? Should I use the arrows? I tend to prefer the poison because it gives you a bit more versatility. And certainly when you're attacking uh, the opposition's tower, or even if you're defending a last ditch defense. So I quite like the versatility of the poison. But anyway, that is my golem deck. That's how I use my golem deck. That's what's been successful for me. And I hope it brings you some success too. If you give it a go, let me down. Uh, let me down. If you do give it a go, let me know down below uh, how you get on. And if you've got some suggestions as to how you would kind of use that deck, but maybe utilise a different character, again, let me know in the comments down below. So that's it for now. Thanks ever so much for watching. As usual, you can uh, subscribe down below. Uh, leave us your comments down below. But you can also follow us on Twitter, at BadLadDad, or Instagram, or Facebook, all that kind of social media stuff. Until we see you next time, stay cool.